Welcome back. Now in today's video we're going to be talking about de Moivre theorem, or at least I think that's how you pronounce his name, but anyways, uh, de Moivre was able to show one handy formula that's really useful for complex numbers. He was able to show that cosine of theta plus i times sine of theta, this should seem fairly familiar, but if you have this raised to the n power, where n is just any integer, that this is equal to cosine of n times theta plus i times sine of sine of n times theta. Now, this is just a handy formula that's pretty useful for taking roots of complex numbers. But if we look at this, we can actually show that we can easily prove this from our Euler's formula. We know that this expression here in the parentheses, that this is just e to the i theta, in this case all raised to the n power. And we know from our property of exponents that this is equal to e to the i t uh, n times theta. And then once again, using our Euler's formula again, we can show that this expression here is equal to cosine n theta plus i times sine n theta. So you may think, well, this is nice, but fairly trivial because we have something much more powerful. But here's the kicker. De Moivre was able to show this before he saw Euler's formula. So they found this out before Euler's formula. Now you may be thinking, well, how did he know how to do it then? And that's what we're going to do in this video. He was able to sh uh, prove this out with a little technique called mathematical mathematical induction. Mathematical induction. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to first talk about what proof by mathematical induction means then apply this to the case that we're uh, essentially trying to prove out de Moivre's theorem. So let's get started. Now, you use mathematical induction when you have an expression, and you want to prove that this ex well, you have an expression with some index. In this case, our index is n. And we want to prove that this works for any integer value of n. That's what you use mathematical induction for. Four, essentially showing that an expression holds for any integer value of n. And this has two steps. The first step is you first need a starting point. Essentially, if we want to show that it holds for any integer value of n, we first need to show that it holds for at least for one value of n. So you have to do in detail, like, proving this expression out for one typical value of n, and to make things easy, we typically use like n is equal to zero, or n is equal to one. Because those are the ones that are like most fairly obvious. Now, with that starting point, we then move on to the next step, the inductive step. Now, the inductive step has two parts. The first is that we have to assume we're going to assume our expression work holds for an arbitrary value of n. Just an arbitrary value of n. So we're going to assume it works for n. Now you may think that this is fairly unusual because that's exactly what we're trying to prove, but just bear with me for one moment. We have to assume that it works for an arbitrary value of n then using that, prove that the expression also works for the case where the index is equal to n plus 1. Essentially, if we assume that this works for an arbitrary inter uh, value, or an arbitrary integer, we have to show that it works for the next integer. So with these two steps, you can show that, it act, that the expression will hold for all integer values. Now let's just work this out and really see like what's going on here. Let's assume that we have a starting point, like we know that this expression works for n is equal to 1. 
Then we're able to do, uh, through some math, show that for an arbitrary value of n, it works uh, for the case when uh, the index is n plus 1. So essentially, if we know it works when n is equal to 1, then this inductive step tells us that it, the expression also holds for the case where n is equal to 2. And if, if we know that it works for n is equal to 2, then this inductive step tells us that it also works for the case when n is equal to 3. And it'll work for the next integer and the next integer till it eventually works for all integer values of n. Uh, the best way to actually think about it is kind of like a domino, like domino effect. What this uh, first step here, the starting point is, you have to prove that at least one domino will fall. And with this inductive step, you have to prove that if the domino falls, its neighbor will fall. Which means that if one domino will fall, and if if one domino falls and its neighbor will fall, then all the dominoes and all the neighbors will fall. If it's still kind of unclear, it may make more sense if we like jump right in and really show like, really try and prove this with mathematical induction. So the first step is we have to show that this works for, let's just say the starting point n is equal to one. Well, we don't really have to do this step out in detail because we know that if we have cosine theta plus i sine theta all raised to the one, that that's just equal to cosine of one times theta plus i times sine of one times theta. It's just fairly obvious. So we know that this works when n is equal to one. Now here's the next step, the real meat of the proof. We have to assume that, I'm just going to rewrite it down here, it might take me a sec, but assuming cosine of theta plus i sine of theta to the n is equal to cosine to the n times theta plus i times sine to the n times theta. If we assume this, we then have to prove, we then prove that cosine theta plus i sine theta raised to the n plus one power is equal to cosine of n plus one times theta plus sine, well, plus i times sine of n plus one times theta. So, using this expression here, we have to prove that this is also the case. And we'll actually do that in the next video, because I'm this video is getting a bit too long, so I'll break it up into two. So I'll hopefully see you in the next part.